everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Alliance Insights Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Bam Rivers. And you've seen her before, but she was so great we had to bring her back again. This is Miss Susan Wood. She's the executive director of House of Heroes here in the Columbus, Georgia area. Susan, it's great to have you back. Well, thank you again Good. for having me. Absolutely. How you been? Uh, doing great. Doing great. Just another good day to serve. All right, so let, let's stay there because the first time that you were here, we talked a lot about service. Mm -hmm. So in order to know a lot about service and who you are, I want to go back to you before House of Heroes okay. because I know your story is a huge part of who you are becoming and who God is calling you to be. So well, what are some things that you've done uh, like before House of Heroes where you serve and continue to build the heart of people? Before House of Heroes, I've always been involved in church because I've played the piano since I was 15 in a church. So I've been able to, I feel like, give of my talents and mm -hmm. I love to sing. Right. So in being able to do that in a church setting, because I want what I do to be able to bless others. Right. And so I've always kind of been in that arena, even when my children were little. I always participated in PTA because it was a way to help the kids, a way to give back to the teachers, a way to bond with people. And, you know, little things like that, people don't really think it makes a difference, but it does make a difference. Working in vacation Bible school, being right. around little children, um, my mother was in a nursing home, being able to go see her mm -hmm. and visit with some of the other residents. It just blesses your heart when you're able to give to others. And I want to transition that into the House of Heroes. And, you know, we know that you guys do a lot of work for multiple, a multitude of heroes uh, throughout this nation, right? But specifically the military. Yes. And you and I were talking offline. And we were just talking about some of the issues that we know people who are in the military deal with when they get out of the military, okay? And because you're at House of Heroes, you have a heart for these people even before you came to. Let's talk about that. What is it that gets you through? And what is it that allows you to continue to stay encouraged knowing that there are so many men and women that have served? Remember, Alliance, this is a veteran-owned business here. A huge portion of their employees are military. So they are very, very, you know, well acknowledged when it comes to this. But let's talk about how does it make you feel when you know that there are some people who have served in the military and now may not have the resources to live an everyday life outside of it. It is a very sad reality. We have, to me, we've become disassociated with the true mm. living conditions of a lot of our veterans. We just assume they served in the military and they may be financially well off enough to take care of themselves. Well, depending on when they served, how long they served, where they served, they're affected sometimes mentally. Absolutely. They can't do things they used to do. Maybe they're injured. So they can't change that light bulb. They can't climb on a ladder. Things that we just, once again, take for granted. But to be able to go back and help them, we see such a great need. And, you know, you, you look on the outside, it's like looking on the outside of a pretty house. Right. I've seen veterans living in a home where the outside looks pretty good. Yard looks good, exterior looks good, but you walk in, they cannot take care of what they have. And they're too proud to ask. And that's what we're here for. It's not about a handout. Right. It's about honoring their service to our nation. And that's what it is. And, you know, whether it's financial literacy, right, or whether it's, because what people don't know, when people are in the military, they have what's called an MOS, mm -hmm. okay, which is their mode of specialty, and they do specific jobs. And I know a lot of times we find that those MOSs don't necessarily translate when they get into civilian life. Talk a little bit more about House of Heroes and what are some of the services that you guys provide, if any, to help that transition period for military members. Personally, House of Heroes doesn't really help with any transition as far as uh, employment or job right. opportunities. Okay. We do invite military to come join us to volunteer because, like mm. you say, a lot of them have some skill. Right. And they just don't have a place to use it. Correct. And being able for them to give out back to a hero means so much also. And, t and talk about that. Talk about the environment when you have people who have served in the military and uh, the diligence that they may possess and also uh, the attention to detail, how does that benefit House of Heroes when you bring in somebody who has served this country to help serve other people who need help in this country? I love that. That question is great because people that have served in the military, yes, they, I mean, it's nothing better than to have a volunteer or even an employee that has served in the military because they're going to give 100%. Mm -hmm. They're going to come out and their attention to detail, like you said, you know, they're, 
they're going to give their all Correct. to help someone else because that's what they've been trained to do. And they have a special skill sometimes that, to be able to talk to the veteran, understand what they're going through, to be able to offer, whether it's contractor type skill, mm -hmm. uh, carpentry, electrical or plumbing, you never know what skill someone has until you get them to volunteer. And then you find out. And then you find out, mm -hmm. right? And I think um, you and I have continued to talk about this one specific skill that everybody has in that service. Yes. You know, God has gifted everybody with the different gifts, but everybody's gift at the core is to be able to serve and have a servant's heart. Mm -hmm. House of Heroes is a nonprofit organization, yes. right? You guys always need help in a variety of ways. I want to give you the floor. Talk to our audience about how they can donate, help. What are some ways that they can pour in the House of Heroes? Thank you so much. Absolutely. There are lots of ways that everyone can help to give back to House of Heroes. I want people to understand we're not United Way funded and we do not get any government funding. Okay. A lot of people just assume, you know, with the name that we probably do. So all of our money comes from individuals, from grants, corporate sponsorships, just people like you and me. They want to give $5, $10, $100. And you can, just every little bit means so much. We had a veteran who actually had been collecting pennies for 20 years. Wow. So he wanted to give back. He was going to give the pennies to an organization after he passed away. Mm. But then he decided, why wait? So he brought them to us, and I'm telling you, 20 years worth of pennies weighs a lot. Yeah, I know that's right. A lot, you know. <laughs> Not something you can just pick up on those jugs, no doubt. but it ended up being over six hundred dollars in coins that we had collect. He had collected. Mm. So that's why I say every penny matters, every, every dollar matters. matters. But not even just financially. You know, if you've been blessed financially, yes, please give because we cannot do what we do without the financial portion of it. Right. But also, like you say, service. Come give to us. You know, whether you donate your time. There's so much you can do on a project. It's not all about skill. Yeah. Sure. I don't have that much skill. Now, I can paint. I can do a little detail work. But a lot of times it's just sitting and talking to the veteran. You can pick up lunch for us. You can run errands for us. You could cook lunch for us. There are just a lot of ways that we can save money by having our volunteers do different things. You know, you may think talking to a veteran is not not a big help, but it really is for several reasons. Imagine if you are an elderly widow mm -hmm. and you have 30 volunteers walking around your house. You might be a little apprehensive with so many people all of a sudden showing up. Right. It can be a shock. But if you have one person that's able just to take them aside, sit down, go through photo albums, just talk to them about their life, they immediately relax and you know they just they're more welcoming for the volunteers coming in because we're I don't want to say we're an intrusion because we're there to help right but it is overwhelming sometimes and I think that that's the biggest reason why building a relationship is so important right because you have to earn the right to not only show up for the first time but show up the second yes. and the third time and everything else after that um, Susan I think I don't know what to say the first interview was phenomenal and so was this one. So I think when I go home, then I'm going to try to rate both of these to see which one was more phenomenal because they were great. Listen, I just appreciate your heart. Thank you know, you. as a man of faith and a man of God, I appreciate the opportunity to serve because honestly, we're not always in the mind to serve. That's true. Sometimes we get caught up in our own stuff and we start to think about the things that we may be dealing with and it takes our mind off of serving someone else. Exactly. And that's just the enemy trying to get us off the track. So to speak with someone like you, to speak with someone with the heart that you have, Thank you for the daily reminder. And as much as we fall short, we can always continue to help other people. That's right. One of my favorite sayings, I read this a couple of years ago, personal fulfillment comes from fulfilling the needs of others. Amen. And it really does. That's all you need to do is go help someone. Most definitely. And you feel so fulfilled yourself by helping someone else. Most definitely. Well, look, um, we're about to come to the end of this episode as well. So you're a veteran in the game, so you already know you're in the hot seat. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, What's so it's time question? for you to spit some wisdom this time. You know, again, any encouragement, anything that you can help people, and I'll just put it this way. There are a lot of military members we know that deal with PTSD. Yes. And I think a lot of people don't realize how it affects the members of the family of that individual. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you've seen in the past and how you would encourage members of the families of people who have been in the military who are dealing with PTSD to keep them encouraged as well as their family. 
I think a lot of it would come from you can volunteer, volunteering right. to help with another veteran. We were talking about PTSD. I have a quick story that mm -hmm. shows the, the power of giving back. So we had a veteran who had very bad PTSD. He would stay locked in his room or he'd get out and walk around and didn't talk to anybody. Right. So we went in and he'd done a few kind of things in the home that we had to help repair just because of the mental state. Had a little fire in the kitchen, uh, poured concrete in the tub, things like that. We were able to repair all that and do some other aesthetics things around the house to make it look better. He actually came to our luncheon we had about five years ago. I had never heard him speak. And he said, I just want to thank you, Ms. Wow. Wood, for everything you did for me. And his wife said he had been a different person. So you never know how exactly. you're going to help somebody. Exactly. Because, you know, when I looked at it, there were a lot of small things, but it all amounted to a lot for him mm. because he saw how people really did care. That's awesome. And I appreciate the story, and we always appreciate you being here with us. So. Thank you. Again. Second time Thank was just you. as great as the first. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. this is Susan Wood. She's the executive director of the House of Heroes here in the Columbus, Georgia area. And we're going into my alliance, alliance affirmations now. And it's going to be simple. It's not about the skill set you have. It's about the will set. Okay? Skill set is great because you have an opportunity to change a lot of lives and do a lot of great things. But remember, your skills will diminish at some point in time. I say this to all of my athletes, and I know this as an athlete as well. Somebody, there's going to come a point when everybody hears the word no to their skills. You're not going to be able to do what you did 15 years ago. But the will set is desire. The will set is simply having the hunger to want to continue to move forward. So if your will to serve is great, it doesn't matter what your skill set looks like. like, like we talked about earlier. If you have the financial means, great. If you don't, there's another way to give. So have the will to be great. Have the will to be fulfilling. Have the will to fulfill other people and have the will to survive. If you've taken one step today, then you're better off than you were five seconds ago. Don't focus on how far your goal is away from you. Focus on the fact that every day you take a step, you're a little bit closer to that goal. And everything will turn out the way you want it to, I promise you. It's your boy Jonathan Bam Rivers. This has been another phenomenal episode of the Alliance Insights Podcast. We can't wait to see you next time. God bless.